Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so blessed today to be bringing God's truth to you. Praise God. Hey, there's a lot I want to share with you today. So can we make the demand for our daily bread? Join me, release your faith right now. Hallelujah. And say, Father, I receive right now my daily bread. It is mine today and I make that demand for it. And I receive it. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Hey, we, we, we are talking about entering into God's rest. And I was showing you something yesterday. You see, it was not that physical tree that had the ability to make man wise. That has never been God's way of operation. God operated everything by his word. So, when you obey God's word, he takes knowledge of you. So, there is this mistake a lot of believers make. And, and I think talking about entering God's rest is important. I, I talk about this. Now, someone is going through a challenge, right? And then you just think that, okay, I'm going to do three days fast. After three days fast, um, this problem is going to be over. And then you fast and start fasting day one, day two. And you're looking at the time. When I hit that mark, I've satisfied what I need to satisfy. So the problem will go away. Now that's a big mistake because that's not how God works. Now this is how God works. While you are fasting, you are supposed to encounter Him. If you get to the end of that fast without encountering Him, then you just wasted your time. So the moment you begin that fast, you should be looking for Him. You see, that's why in, 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 in truth, you know, you don't even put a limit to your fast. I know we do that a lot. So let's fast. Now there are times the Lord will call, call for a fast and then he would say, do this. Now when God says, do this, then he has set the timing for that. Now during this, this, this teaching, I'm going to talk about those things, those timings. So God can set the timing. God can actually tell you, take a three days fast. And then you take the three days fast. Now he knows why he told you to take a three days fast. He knows. So, now it's different from when you by yourself say, you know what, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to fast for this number of days. And then you feel because you have accomplished that, then God should do his own part. No, that's not how it works. This is how it works. While in that fast, now the one you call forth for yourself, even the one God calls for, you should look sick the same thing. While in that fast, you should be looking out for him. You should be looking out for an encounter with him. It is that encounter when he shows up, he is the one that will now take you in to that thing that you desire. It is not the fulfillment of the law that will take you into that thing. See that now? So the same thing now. You, you, you know, Satan was able to convince Eve that, hey, that tree, when you eat that tree, you will become wise. And she looked at the tree, so I can just eat a tree and become wise. Yeah. But what she didn't understand is that the tree in itself will not make you wise. It is the obedience of his instruction concerning the tree that will make you wise. See that now? Now, it's important you know that because now that this is what happened. So Eve felt, okay, this she can make somebody wise, okay? And she ate the tree. When she ate the tree, she didn't become wise. She didn't. And then she 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 went to her husband, like, I've eaten the tree, I've eaten the fruit, this fruit. Ah no, I didn't die. I didn't die. Now, remember also that God said, the day you eat of that tree, you will surely die. That's what God told Adam. The day you eat of the tree, you will surely die. Now, guess what? They ate the tree. 
Now, Adam was looking at Eve because Adam's heart, he just felt the day he just bites that tree. Oh, he would just drop and die. That tree was that poisonous. But like I said, it was a normal tree. Like every other tree that grew from the ground. And then the Bible said it was good for food. So they knew that it was good for food. But then they just felt there was a mystery around the tree. The mystery that was around the tree is simply the word of God that was attached to it. Are you getting it now? The word of God that was attached to it. Now this is how people mis mistaken, mistake these things and they begin to go into worship of idols. Because God gave a command concerning something, they begin to glorify that thing even above the word of God that came concerning that thing. You see that now? So God said, oh, this thing is holy. It's holy not because of the product that, that made that thing special. Uh -uh. It is holy because of the word of God that came consigning that thing. So what we exalt is the word of God that was given consigning that thing, not that thing itself. I need you to understand this. So they ate this fruit. So Adam saw his wife ate it. Nothing happened to her. She was still normal. And then Adam said, whoa, okay, let me eat it also. He ate it and like, okay. Now guess what the devil did? He came back to them and said, ha. Because I told you, he too, I told you that yesterday, he too was curious about that tree and its fruit. He wanted to know what will really happen if you eat this tree. He wanted to know because he wanted to still know more about God. So when they ate it, nothing happened. And Satan began to wonder, okay, does God lie? No, God does not lie. So he showed up again and told them that, hey guys, you are now naked. And then they were like, yeah, we know that already. No, don't be foolish. Now you see, because they have already started believing him, that that was the problem. They had started believing him by this time already. He told them, eat. They ate. Now he came again and said, hey, can't you see now your eyes are open? You are naked. Nothing happened to them. Their eyes did not suddenly open. No, it did not suddenly open. I want you to hear me. It was Satan that went to them and told them, this is naked. And the word he used for naked was different from the word they knew about nakedness. What they knew about nakedness was open, plain, nothing to hide. But Satan brought a different word to them that depicts shame and exposed. You see that now? So now that's what Satan introduced to them as naked. And he made them ashamed. Now that's the reason when God showed up and they believed him. Now that's where the problem is. They believed him. So when God showed up and said, Adam, where are you? And Adam said, oh, we heard your voice and we hid ourselves because we were naked. What did God say? Who told? Now actually what God said, who told you naked? That's what he said. Who told you naked? More like who taught you naked? He was, he was referring to the word. See that now? Who told you that word? Because I didn't tell you that. And I'm the one that's training you. So who told you that? God knew instantly they have begun to fellowship with the devil. And God knew that that's where the devil would go for, that tree. He knew. Because when God was giving them that instruction, God was aware that Lucifer was there. He was aware the devil was there. He knew. Why didn't God now drive them? No, you see, the devil has never been God's problem. And the devil is not our problem. God doesn't see the devil as our problem. It never, he has never seen him as our problem. 
if we will just obey his word. You see, it's, 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 you know, it's like, you know, these days, you know, you're raising children and you're trying to protect what they watch. You're trying to protect what they do. Now, some people cut off everything, you know, no, no going on the internet for my children. No, no, no doing this, no doing that. Now, even though that looks good, it can be dangerous in itself. And I'll tell you why. You, you kind of shield the children from being exposed to certain things. And in your mind, you are thinking they don't know those things exist. So you continue there and, and, and in parenting, let me just share this with you now, so you learn. In parenting, most times you find parents not willing to grow or not willing to be affected. You know, it, it, it's more like not, not willing to put their hands to the plow. So they, they just want to block and block. It takes, um, it takes, it takes more to teach than to keep from, um, to, to keep heights some things from someone. So for example, say, you know what? Don't do this. Don't do this. Don't do this. What about, this is what this thing is all about. Now, that's why the Bible says Adam was not deceived, but Eve was deceived. Now, why did the Bible say Adam was not deceived? I'll tell you. Adam knew everything about that tree. He knew. He knew it. Why? Because God told him about it. He knew. Eve didn't know because Adam told her, see that tree? Don't even go near it. Don't touch it. Because he didn't want to take the pain to explain to her every truth concerning that tree. But that's what God did to him. You see that? So God saw his own action as pure disobedience. Not Eve. Eve was just led astray because she lacked knowledge. But she disobeyed her husband, of course. Because her husband told her, don't eat it, don't touch it. But God didn't say, don't touch it. You know how these things work? You want to express the seriousness of a matter, so you give a stronger command. But it's always good when you teach, teach properly. Look, this kind of programs, that kind of program, it's, it's, it's injurious to you. This is what it can do to you. And this is so, based on this, we, are, we will tell you to avoid it. In our home, we don't do these things. Now, what have you left with that child? Knowledge. Knowledge. So now when they go against that knowledge, you know they were not deceived. They deliberately went against it. And when you teach, sometimes it's good you teach with sufficient information. Leaving no gray area. You teach every truth. Thank you, Holy Spirit. All right, so now it was the devil that came and said, naked. And God said, who told you? You are naked. Uh, you've gone to eat of that tree. Oh, the woman, you know the story. But you see, that caused a big problem for them. And after God finished dealing with them, this is what happened. Now, verse 22, Genesis chapter 3. Then the Lord God said, Behold, the man has become like one of us to know good and evil. Now and now, lest he put out his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. Therefore, the Lord God sent him out of the garden of Eden to till the ground 
from which he was taken. Now you see, because they disobeyed God, and they disobeyed simply because of unbelief. Adam, Adam actually walked in unbelief. That's what led him into disobedience. It starts from unbelief. Then you get into disobedience because God has spoken to him about that tree and told him all the good things about the tree, right? And the things to hope for if he obeys and keep his obedience where that tree is concerned. Now, he, first of all, had to reject in his heart all those things God told him, all those things God promised him, that that was where unbelief came in. And because of unbelief, he now became disobedient to the instruction that God gave to him. And because he did that, God sent him out of the garden to go and till the ground. Now, this was how man was taken out of his place of rest. And that's where struggling began. That's where trying to sort yourself out, trying to take care of yourself because he says God sent him out of the garden to till the ground. In the garden of Eden, he wasn't tilling the ground. He was just eating from what was. Now God had to send him out of the garden, out of that environment. Now you know what this is when you leave the, the, the presence of God. You are going to suffer. Praise God. And that's what happened to them. God says, go out. Over there, you will till the ground. In here, everything has been provided for. Praise God. But time is up for today. Hey, hey, you're going to learn a lot. And the purpose of this is that you will enter into God's rest. So I've shown you from the beginning how Adam and Eve were in God's rest and how they fell out and were driven out of that rest place and they began to suffer. Praise God. Thank you, Holy Spirit. I pray the word of God grows in your heart. I pray your eyes be open to see everything that you ought to see. And I pray that God's grace is sufficient upon your life today. And the word of God will come to you that will usher you into his rest. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow.